Hi everyone, welcome to the Chroma Inspire webinar. We're going to get started in just a moment. So <clears throat> this webinar will be recorded and you guys will be able to ask questions in the chat feature. So there is a chat feature that you can use. Uh, you do not need your camera on. You will be looking at my screen, so I will be sharing my screen and <clears throat> I will check the chat box and answer all of your questions as we go along. So today the meeting is about digitizing a logo start to finish. So um, if you are a brand new, um, if you're a beginner and you don't know any of the tools, um, I would recommend to stay in the webinar and you'll definitely be able to learn some things, um, but we do have some preliminary videos um, on YouTube if you need a refresher on any of the features we have. Um, we also have a introduction to digitizing class and that would be the very beginner class. Um, but again, you'll always learn some things, so please ask me any questions using the chat box. Um, this is recorded, so you do not need to keep your camera on, otherwise you will be in the video. And um, we'll get started in just about 30 seconds, okay? And if you guys can hear me OK, just give me a little chat. Let me know that you can hear me and you can see my screen. Mm. Wonderful. All right. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> OK, so we are going to begin so today we are going to digitize a logo from start to finish so i'm going to go through and just talk about our different stitch types and we're going to use a jpeg so i just came up with a little design um, <clears throat> and it's just inspired by a recent uh, vacation so we're doing something very simple um, any questions you guys have um, regarding what I'm doing, just give me a little chat. I will monitor it. So if I don't answer right away, um, don't worry. I'm going to look through all the questions and I will give you um, an answer and show you, you know, how to do something. Okay. So <clears throat> we are using just Chroma Inspire today. And we have um, our window here with all of our main digitizing tools on the left. And on the very top of the screen, that's going to be our tools like our alignment tools, our arranging tools, and some of our view options. So all of our tools that we have here on the screen, you can also find a lot of these in your file, edit, view, or tools drop down menus. So a lot of things are found in multiple locations. The way that we're going to digitize our logo is I am using a JPEG. So most of the time when you're going to digitize a logo, you do already have an image to work from. I think that it's probably very rare to just freehand digitize something from scratch, although you can certainly do that. But in this case, we have something to start from. So there are a couple different ways to bring in an image. The best way to do this is to use our backdrop tool. The backdrop tool is found um, just about like a halfway or a quarter of the way down on the left. And if you hover over, you'll see it says backdrop. So I'm going to click there and it will open up my file explorer and I will be able to select any of my images. So I'm going to bring in this little buoy image here. And what I can do with this is I can resize it so that is it is the same scale that I want it to embroider. So it is important that you digitize at the right scale. If you digitize something extremely small and then you enlarge it, it's not going to stitch out the same way. Same thing if you digitize something extremely large 
and then you were just to try and shrink it down, it's not going to work out well. So um, we can make any sizing changes um, if they're minimal, but we don't want to go from one extreme to the other. So I can just simply drag this box in or out, or if I know that it needs to be a specific size, I can enter in a size here on the top right. So this image, I can see from my ruler or my grid, it's about four inches high, so um, I like that size. And again, if I need to make any minor change to the size, that will be perfectly fine. I just don't want to go from, say, one inch to 10 inches or vice versa. So when we use the backdrop tool, what we're doing here is we're placing an image onto the screen and then now it's stuck to my screen. So it's anchored here. And what I can do is I can just trace right over this image with my different stitch tools. So it's giving me a little guide and now I can just trace, okay? So once I have my backdrop here, the first thing I'm gonna do is just decide which area I want to start with. The best way to look at something is, what do you want the machine to stitch out first? You want the machine to stitch out the bottom layer and then move up towards the top. So I would not digitize these waves first. I would definitely begin with the large base of the object and then work my way up to the top layer. And we do see some uh, small details here. And one thing I am going to talk about is sometimes we might need to simplify an image. And I'm actually going to um, eliminate that blue water there and just have some waves. So just like a guide for us to make our design. So what I look at here is I'm going to look at the red areas. And the red areas are a pretty large area of stitch, especially down in the base of this buoy. So I'm going to use my complex fill tool. So <clears throat> the complex fill tool is going to be used for larger areas of stitch. We have three different stitch types and these are our main stitch types. We can do um, pretty much any type of digitizing with what we have here. So even though this is our basic program, we can do just about anything. It just might take a little bit longer um, than if we were to have some of our shortcut tools in say Chroma Lux. So we have our run stitch. This is for really small details. So I could maybe do the light beams in a run stitch or this X in the center of the top. The Classic satin stitch is going to be used for columns or maybe the waves. I want those to be satin. Um, anything that we want, like a side to side stitch. Um, satin is used for lettering as well. And then our complex fill is going to be for our larger areas of fill. So I'm going to click on that and we have our small cursor. And I'm just going to start with, say, the base. So I'm going to begin here at the bottom of this buoy, just right at the bottom. And I'm just focusing on the red shape. So right now, I'm just making the base of it and just clicking at all of the corners. And anytime I need to finish off a shape, so I have two points that I want to connect, I can just hit C or enter and it will close the object. So I have the beginning of my buoy. Now, if I say needed to adjust this shape, I can easily go into my shape tool. So just below our select tool on the left. And I can easily drag those points and adjust them if I need to. So I can drag it out wherever I needed to go. So I have the start of the base and I'm just going to keep working on the red areas. So I'm doing this in a couple different segments. 
Um, I could have created, say, this entire shape and then maybe cut out a hole. So let's do that for the top. I'm going to overlap my areas. Anytime we have two sections that are touching, we do want them to slightly overlap and that way we don't risk there to be any empty space. When you have something stitch out on the machine, you will see that there is going to be some pulling on your stitches. So the stitches pull in a bit because of tension and we may end up with gaps. That's why I have my objects overlapped. So if we look at it up close, and I just changed the color so we can see. I have that pink overlapping with that red, just a little bit. So we have most of our buoy here, but I do need to cut out this center area. So if we go to our shape tool, we have the ability to make a hole so I can cut out this center area of this large complex fill shape. While I'm on the shape tool, I can just right click on any line or point. So I just right clicked on one of these blue squares and I have the option to add a hole. So now I'm just gonna draw right in the middle and I'm just tracing that inside area. And then I can just click enter or right click and it finishes off. Okay. So if we look at it all together, that is the start of our shape. So any questions so far? You guys are following along. Again, this is recorded so don't worry about trying to duplicate what I'm doing. Just take some notes, write your questions down, and you can always view this session afterwards as well. And I'm happy to send you this uh, JPEG of the buoy. So you guys want, if you want to practice, you can um, give it a go. So I'm going to continue with the red area. And what I did here, I just turned on the 3D view. So it looks more um, realistic and you can turn it on or off. It's much easier to see through the stitches if it is um, off. So I'm just going to leave it on our stitch view. So let's just make this small red top of the buoy. And I'm just, I'm not worrying about these outlines just yet. That can be, that can come later on. I'm just gonna make the base of this and um, Hopefully we'll have a little time and I will go through how to create that black border around the whole buoy. So I have the top and now I'm just going to focus on some of the details. So the first thing that I can do is I can create this X in the middle. So I can just again use my complex fill tool or if I decided I wanted that to be a satin then I can use my satin. But in this case, for this area, I'm going to still use complex fill. And now if we want um, our colors to be different, I just selected the complex fill tool and then I right clicked on a different color chip at the bottom. Um, and if you need to change one of your color chips, you can double click and it will give you a long color chart with a bunch of different palettes and you can always change a color. So if I need something different, I can double click to change it or right click to choose that color to digitize with. So this X, I can definitely make this in one whole shape and I'm just drawing, tracing and making sure I overlap as well. So as you can see, my black lines are going much further over the red. And we can actually layer these differently in just a moment. So I'm gonna hit enter and it finishes off. 
Now, if we look at our shape tool, I did overstep just here. So we're looking at this point towards the left and I can just adjust there. So we can make any adjustments. You don't have to be perfect the first time. We have tons of editing options and it's very easy to just adjust our points. Now, if we turn on our 3D view again, we're going to see that this X is on top of the red. I don't want it to stitch out that way. I want that black piece to actually go first. So we have alignment um, or arranging tools. And what I can do here is I'm just going to click my select tool. And I'm going to select this X. And at the top of my screen, right at the bottom right, so almost at the end, I have move to back and move to front. So I want to move this to the back. And there it goes right behind my red area. So this black area will actually stitch out first and then it will do all of these red bits. Now, since we are looking at the top area here, <coughs> I see that I have a long string attaching these two areas. And that's normal. The program will choose to um, add a jump stitch if it sees two objects that are the same color and close to each other. So all I have to do here is I can select one of the objects and we have the option to add a command. So I know that the base is going to stitch first and then it does the top. So I'm going to select the base and I can go up to my upper right hand corner. Click the commands tab. So it's second to the last. And I can add an end command. And I want to trim. And we can click apply and we're going to see that line disappear. OK, so what we did there is we added a command on this shape. And so when it ends, trim. And there we have trimmed. So we have most of the red here, that's completed. And now let's look here towards the bottom. So we actually have a white stripe on the buoy. So let's use a different stitch type for that stripe, just to add a little variety. I'm going to select my classic satin. With the classic satin, we're making a column. The stitches are going from side to side or top to bottom. And so the way that we're using this tool is we need to click either left to right and move downwards, or we need to click top to bottom and then move to the side. So in this case, I'm going to select a white color. So I just right clicked there on my color chip at the very bottom. And I'm just going to make a little white column and I can just click from corner to corner and drag it out completely. And we'll right click and that will finish off that shape. So if we look at it, in 3D, we see we have a little column. And these can delete. All right. So we're going to keep going. And basically, I'm just kind of finishing off this whole design. And I'm going to go a little bit quick and that way we can have a lot of time for questions and I can um, spend some time um, showing you guys anything you have questions about. So this shape I do just want to edit slightly. OK. <clears throat> so 
let's move up to the top here and let's finish off the top of the buoy. So with this small area here, I wouldn't choose to do a run stitch because the run stitch will be very, very thin to connect the top red to the bottom red. I could maybe do a run stitch for these small um, shining light um, beams. But up here, I actually want to do a classic satin. So that way we're gonna have a little bit of complex fill, a little bit of classic satin. Now, if I wanted this to be complex fill, I could certainly do that. And the best way to do that is I would probably create a sh entire shape so I'm just going to show you guys real quick um, a good method of doing this. And um, to be honest, I, if I knew I wanted it complex fill, I would have made the entire shape and then cut out a hole, right? So I have this area. I'm going to right click, add a hole, and then we can just add a couple holes for all of these open spaces. I can click enter. I can do another hole and then you're just making the holes and that is going to cut everything out really easily for you. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to create this in a classic satin. And I'm only clicking three times here when I want the shape to close or finish off. You can just tap on enter or hit C and it will close it off. And we'll do one more at the bottom. And then again, hit enter, and then there we have it. And so just to give you an idea, there would be my complex fill shape of the, the top. So I'm gonna move that to the side, and we're actually going to make this in a classic satin. So if we're looking at the actual um, image here, everything has this black uh, border. So all of the red area has the black border around it and um, we have uh, the inside is the black area too. So if I'm actually looking at the whole image for this area, I actually wanna begin at the very top and do the entire like triangle. So click on classic satin and I'm gonna use that dark gray color. So clicked on color chip 20. And I'm gonna begin in the top center and then work my way around. I could maybe, I could start maybe at the left and work my way from the left up to the top and then down, or I could work from the right. So it actually doesn't matter. Um, there are always a couple different ways to do this. So I actually decided I'm going to work from the, the bottom here. And I'm just going to click left to right, and then I'm gonna move my way up. So moving up here, clicking left to right, and then I can angle it slightly. And now in this area here, where I have sort of a, a turn, so hopefully you guys can see the area I'm talking about. I'm not gonna click up here because then my shape is going to be way outside of the lines. I'm actually gonna angle it in like this. And then that way I can pivot and go up. So anytime you have like a corner, you want to try and make, say, like a diagonal type of shape. So down here in that corner, I went diagonally and then now I can move down and we're getting a little pixelated, but we're moving down. Coming in. Moving down here. And I'm not worrying about that inside area just yet. I'm just going to focus on one bit at a time. 
and then coming down and finishing it off. So there's the start of my shape. And then of course I can go in and make some small edits because I do see that some areas I might just need to adjust my points. Um, and these yellow lines, you can just move them out of the way, but we can just kind of make a little bit of edits so then I would go and finish off, say, the inside area. And then, of course, we can work for work around the rest of the border. So let's work on the inside. And I'm just going to do this small area. And we can we can work on layering everything correctly in just a little bit. Get our shapes created. I'll come down here. So we could actually try to do. Oops. So anytime you need to delete, you can just hit your backspace key. And we can certainly make the this area in like one continuous line. We could definitely narrow it down to how many segments we have, but in this case, I'm just doing them all separately. Now, we have quite a few jump stitches here, so we'll work on that. And then we're also going to work on the arrangement of it all. So I know that I want this major outline to be on the top so I can just select that one and I can bring it to the front and that way it's layering over the other areas. And then if we want to make a trim, then I'm just going to select all of this section. Go to my commands and I can. Put an end command as trim and that just takes care of all of them for me. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, kind of finish off the rest of the shape um, with our border. So I would finish off a border just around the whole buoy and I can do that pretty quickly. And then we want to focus on our densities. I can already tell that the density of these classic satin areas is a little bit high, meaning the stitches are kind of far apart. So I, I know that I can go and, and fix that, but I'm going to do it all at once. So let's just work on finishing off our border. And then we're going to add some text as well. So we will be able to talk a little bit about text and then definitely <clears throat> want you guys to ask any questions you have and that way we can show you on the screen and i'm just working pretty quickly around this base that way we'll have enough time so when i'm doing these corners again just to display here I'm coming down to the corner and moving up uh, right in the center, so sort of at a diagonal, and that's going to allow me to create a nice sharp corner. And I can go all the way up top. So if I want, I can make this in a smaller section. So we can make a couple extra taps on the screen. We don't have to do it all in one. And whenever I'm zooming in or panning around, um, I'm, I'm using a mouse, so I'm zooming in with the mouse and I'm tapping on the space bar to give me this panning hand. And that will allow me to move around the screen so I can zoom in and out and I can work at a really nice small scale. 
So we're finishing this off here and I'm just bringing it up top. And right clicking and then of course we can make some adjustments. So I know I need to pull this out a little further, maybe pull this area in a little bit and just work around your shape. Making the right adjustment there. Oh, so this is a great <clears throat> learning. Um, experience. So see what happened here. My, all of my stitches are really, really crazy and wild now. The reason is I moved this yellow line out of my way because I wanted to move one of these points. The yellow lines are telling your stitches to go in that direction. So since I moved these out of the way, they're telling the stitches to go diagonal top to bottom one way and then all of a sudden change and be almost completely flat. So this is why my stitches now look a little bit crazy all the way around. And the fix for that is I'm just moving them back to how they were and I can right click. Same for this one at the bottom, I moved that one. So just keep in mind those yellow lines are your angle lines and they are telling your stitches which way to go. If you want to edit your points, so if I want to edit this corner over here and this yellow line is in my way, I can actually right click and edit outlines. And this is going to hide everything else and now I can just work on editing these blue points. And I don't have to worry about my yellow lines. I think I'm going to sneeze. OK. So we have almost all of our little buoy created. Let me see if we have any questions. Everyone's doing OK. We're learning. So again, you, 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 you can use the chat box to um, ask your questions here. And I'm just giving a little message there. So let's look at our waves. So this is going to be a great um, opportunity to learn how to make curved areas. So whether we wanted complex fill or classic satin or even a run stitch, we need to make a nice curve. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to hide all of my design. I can Delete that actually because I don't need that. And I'm just going to select everything that I have. And I can actually group it and then move it off to the side, which will be easier for me. So I can group it together and then I can move it off. And that way I can always bring it back. But now I have better visibility on the ocean waves. Another thing that you can do if it's just one section that you want to hide or move, you have an eyeball icon next to your line item. So in your sequence panel, you can turn this eyeball on and off and it will just hide your item. So, but I just grouped it, moved it off, and now I can look at just the waves. So these waves are repeating and they're actually all like they're completely even. So what we can do is we have a, um, a repeat and a carousel option. They're up at the top. So I'm actually just going to create one curve and then I'm going to repeat it and merge it all together. I don't have to make four separate lines of a continuous wave. I'm going to make this in a classic satin. So I'm going to start from one edge. And I kind of want it to be a little rounded on this edge, so I'm going to start a little bit further in. And then work my way around the curve. So I made a small line here. And when I want my lines to curve. We're going to hold 
onto our control key. So if you see now, as I'm moving around this wave, it's actually slightly curving my lines and it's allowing me to make and then I can finish it off. And then of course we can edit our lines and work on those outlines. So just to make them really nice and even. And what I did here on the, the left, so I put two clicks here, so that way it gives more of a rounded corner look. Does that make sense? So I have this. And I could actually just do there's a couple different ways, so I could select this. I can hold down control and I can drag one off. And. One side is straight, one side is curved. I could just flip it or I can edit this and then just keep duplicating it and putting it together. So I could just keep going and duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Or I can select one of them. So let's use this one. And I'm just going to edit up here. So actually don't really need that point. And I can just make it kind of straight, right? So I'm going to select the item and we have a duplicate key at the very top of our screen, top just below help right here, duplicate. So if I click that, then I can click however many times on the screen to create this shape. So you can see I'm just clicking, 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 and until I select a different tool, it will allow me to duplicate however many of those objects that I need. We also can use our repeat uh, tool here, and this is how it's going to repeat. So you have so many different ways, and in this situation, I am actually going to use that repeat tool because I'll show you what how it's going to be much easier. So let's just say we have one of our objects going into repeat. I know I actually need four rows of this, so we have four. And then if we look here, I have eight. So we have eight across and four down, and there we have our waves. And I can just click OK, and then voila, there it is. And then I can group these all together, and that's going to be my easy waves and I will um, I'll go in. I can fix the corners over here so they're more rounded. So you can see on the left we have more rounded corners and on the right they're a little bit straight. So I can certainly um, fix that and then I can go and adjust the density and make it a little bit um, lower. So just to show you quickly that's how we would do it, um, but I would definitely want to make a couple edits and just so that the connection here is going to be really nice and sharp. So we would do this um, prior to using that repeat tool. So like making sure that the connection here is going to match up really nicely. So like that. So I could say then grab on to both of these and then maybe I can repeat these all the way across um, or just take this one and then go and repeat this one across and that would give me a nice like sharper corner. Um, so lots of different ways. These are all still individual items unless you group them. So I can actually take say these corners. 
going to duplicate. I'm going to go to my transform and I'm going to flip it. Oops, no. I'm going to mirror it. And then we can replace these on the edge with ours that are rounded. And I just added a trim there. And there we have it. So And we have our little buoy. OK, and then if we do want to make those little light beams. We could just make a simple little run stitch. It's going to be really small. And then of course we can add in a trim, no problem. So if I know I want all of my run stitches to trim, we can do that. Okay, so now I am gonna add a little bit of text to make it a little fun. Let's go into our text tool. And what I did here is I typed two lines. So I selected my text tool up in the upper right hand corner. I did two lines because I want yeah on the top and boy on the bottom. And then just above the apply key, I have type. And so you can actually make it into a circle. And then from there, I can just play with the text um, the font, I mean, if I want it to be a different font. And I can change the size. I can rotate it, so maybe we want it to be more like that. I can click back to the text tool and we can actually play with the way that it's, um, that it curves. We can kind of do a lot with it, so. Anything you guys want, you can pretty much do just with a little practice. And then I can just remove that background. And here's my little design. Now, one very, very important thing that I tell people all the time, and this is extremely important. Even if I'm done with this, I'm going to go to File, Save As, RDE. The RDE file is the working file type of Chroma. So we always want to keep an RDE file because if I ever need to come back and make an edit, I'm going to make an edit on the RDE file. OK, so we'll always save an RDE and we're always going to keep that file in RDE format. For the machine, we are going to then go and save as DST. So always keep an RDE and then of course for the machine save as an R, uh, DST file. OK. So we can't save a DST and then go back and save it as an RDE and still have the same editing capabilities. We always just have to keep the native RDE file. OK, so I didn't really have any questions from you guys. Um, we have just about 10 minutes left, so I definitely want you guys to ask any questions you have. Um, we went through this pretty quick um, there in the inside. There was also a little border um, and we can certainly make that, but um, you guys can see kind of how it's done. We used all three stitch types. Um, we used our duplicate, our repeat. We cut out some holes. We used our trim. 
we used our text tool. We created a circle text. Um, so we did quite a lot. We used a lot of our features here. So um, you can see that you really do have so much capability to fully digitize with Chroma Inspire. I have a question. Hello? So there is, um, so the first question I have, the density. So we, we changed the density of just our waves, but yes, so we didn't really go over the density just yet. Um, that's a good reminder. Your default density on a lot of things is going to be a 0.5. So for the text, for example, if I click on this fill option, we see that the density is 0.5. So your density is going to depend on your fabric. Um, the a good middle ground is going to be a 0.3, and that's going to give you a nice thick look. Um, if you are doing really, really small lettering, you would actually want to keep your density set higher, so 0.4 or 0.5. Um, and if you're doing something that is like really stretchy and delicate, um, again, you don't want to go too dense on something like that. So 0.3 is a good um, middle of the road. And if we wanted to change the entire design, um, we could actually just set everything to. And then there we have it really quick. The next question I have, um, so changing uh, the stitch sequence. So for hats, we always want to have the design stitch from the center moving outwards or and or the bottom moving up. So um, in this case, what we can do is we would actually need to just manually resequence um our sections in our sequence panel and to kind of um, piggyback on another question we have the um, chroma lux is our higher tier of software and it does give you on text specifically it gives you the option to um, have it stitch bottom up or middle out so there are a couple shortcuts that we find in Chroma Lux that make digitizing um, a lot easier. But if we're just looking at resequencing everything manually, we can have a look at our slow redraw. And we can see that, so it pretty much goes bottom towards the top, then it does our details. And then the text, it goes, yeah, boy. So what we can do here is we could just split this up. I could type out buoy first and have that go first and then type out yeah second. Or I can just actually resequence each individual letter. And the way I would do that is I would right click, break up my text, and then I would drag the this word just on top of the other word. And now if we look at our slow redraw, we can see it is sequenced differently. So we do actually have a couple YouTube videos on um, cap resequencing. So with Chroma Lux, you have many uh, additional features. You have font editor. You have two other stitch types. You have stitched snapshots. You have a convert option. You have a border option. So there are a lot of additional tools in Chroma Lux. You guys can actually download a free trial and test out any of the Chroma tiers. If you are thinking of upgrading, I would go straight to Lux and skip over Chroma Plus which is in the middle um, because you will open up all the features available. And I didn't need to reorganize my groups because basically as I was digitizing, um, I went in the correct sequence and anytime I didn't, let's say I created this red section and then I made the 
black X in the middle. I just resequenced it right then and there. So that's usually the best way to work is um, just each section kind of think about where you want it to be. And as you digitize, you can use your um, placement and alignment tools. So the ones at the very top, move to front, move to back, and you can just kind of go along that way. So that way I wouldn't have to then go and resequence everything. So my recommendation is digitize exactly how you want this to stitch out. So digitize from the back, moving up to the top. And um, the Slow redraw is the button that is located at the very top of your window, right next to the percentage box. So it is right next to where mine says 80%. And I just clicked there, and then I dragged this blue line across the way, and it shows me exactly how the design will stitch out. The auto digitize is just a tool. It is going to depend on the quality of your image and the intricacy of the image. So if your image is pixelated, the auto digitizer tool will not work well. If your image has a lot of gradient or small details, the auto digitize will not work well. It's just taking a look at the image and then trying to take different sections and create stitch types. So it really depends on your image. And so this is recorded. It will be posted on our YouTube channel within a day or two. Um, so I will try my best to get it um, up on the site as soon as possible. And if you want to, <clears throat> make your text appear bolder. You can do a little trick um, and you can actually take your text. So I'm just going to use the um, H as an example and I'll show you the difference. We can actually use our pull compensation to make the text look a lot bolder. So what I'm doing here is I'm just choosing percentage and I'm increasing it to 140. And you can see the difference there. So the H on the right, it just has um, pull compensation, which means the stitches are actually going to overextend themselves about 40%. And that will give you a bolder look. So that's a little um, trick little workaround um, and with the overlaps um, I usually overlap like two millimeters it won't hurt to overlap a little bit extra but if you don't overlap enough you will end up having a little bit of white areas <clears throat> 